I think a lot about how the human um, condition is, is changing uh, and how technologies are enabling sort of what we're going to be. I think that the, the two big questions for humanity are um, what is the trajectory of intelligence and sentience? In other words, like what's the point? Um, and also like how do we get there w without uh, killing each other or, or just, just all dying violently? I think that there should be UN sustainable development goals for um, can humanity get on the same page about what's after people? Um, and can we figure out a way to have a non-arms race global dynamic to get there? Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are on site at the Brain and Cognitive Sciences Building at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We are now gonna be talking about programmatically generated everything. We have Daniel Fagella joining us on the show. Hello. Hey, Helen. Very serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan's awesome. We had him on already on the show. You can check out the link in the bio to our first episode together. And now we're going to be unpacking so much more about what we missed in that first episode. That was super short, only less than 30 minutes. But now we're going to jump into it deeper. For those that don't know Dan's background, he's the founder and CEO of Emerge, the only market research and company discovery platform focused exclusively on artificial intelligence and machine learning. He regularly speaks for audiences of business and government leaders with a focus on the critical near-term implications of artificial intelligence across major sectors, including presentations for the World Bank, the UN, Interpol, and global pharmaceutical and banking companies. And you can check out the links below to Emerge, Dan Fagella's website, as well as Twitter and LinkedIn. All right, let's start things off with our one of our favorite questions, we find ourselves as stewards of Earth. What is your current take on the state of our world? Oh man, bias, bias takes from everybody, I guess, right? Given what their, their focus and their background is. Um, yeah, right now, my take on the state of the world is, uh, is a, an increasingly enfeebled and infighting West um, vying for some semblance of technological relevance in the next 20 years. Uh, that, that's maybe like a quick synopsis. Um, and, and, and Due to Asia? Yeah, China. Um, China super particularly, uh, and for good reason. Um, and sort of what that looks like in terms of um, collaboration and, and clash and whatever else um, in, in the years ahead. So uh, technological dominance of the technologies that are going to absolutely transform the human experience. I think that um, kind of control there is going to be a big deal, and I think that that's what the next you know, 20, 30 are going to be. So that's my, my hot take. And this is how we ended up introing the episode with Dan. There was such a profound clip where he talked about the AI substrate monopoly, and I had to put that at the front of the video to reel people in because it was such a solid way of phrasing. Um, and we're going to end up talking about that as we go in. I totally agree. There's something interesting going on with the geopolitical um, uh, kind of co collaboration slash competition between the United States and China. I hope we can just figure out how to spiritually enrich oh. ourselves to that oneness and uh, yeah. Yeah, dude, oh, 100%. I mean, who, who knows how it'll rattle out, but I think that that is the grand cosmopolitan hope and I'm with you on that, so. Yes, all right, so let's talk about, you know, you write so much and in your writings, you're doing a lot of, you know, you do a lot of short-term implications with Emerge. Yeah. Um, and this is the three sectors, pharmaceutical, banking, and... Defense. And yeah, defense. covered a lot of defense. And in the long term, you do a lot of writing, you do a lot of extrapolating of, of current trends in terms of especially, yes, virtual realities, um, artificial general intelligences, um, substrate monopolies, et cetera, and human behavior and psychology. So give us a, you know, give us a synopsis on your long-term understanding of kind of where things are headed. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, lots to potentially unpack, I suppose. I'm only one person. I, I guess the best that I could hope to, to, to sort of like maybe pry some potentialities in, in like one specific area. But I think a lot about how the human um, condition is, is changing. Uh, and how technologies are enabling sort of what we're going to be. I think that the, the two big questions for humanity are um, what is the trajectory of intelligence and sentience? In other words, like what's the point? Um, and also like how do we get there w without uh, killing each other or, or just, just all dying violently? I think that there should be UN sustainable development goals for um, can humanity get on the same page about what's after people? Um, and can we figure out a way to have a non-arms race global dynamic to get there? So these are the things I, I, I care the most about. Uh, 
I, I think that a big part of that shift is AI enabling economic prominence and, and military sway and, and power uh, in, and influence in a great many ways. Um, and I think China has some tremendous advantages in terms of how they can wield that compared to the United States. Um, just the, the, their culture and a whole bunch of other factors. Um, and uh, that essentially ownership of these virtual worlds that we're going to be creating, these, these sort of digital environments that we're entering, um, is going to be kind of the other big aspect. So it's going to be the, the economic military prominence, which I think is going to be swelled by tech. Uh, and then I think there's going to be what happens to people. And, and I think we go in, I think is the answer. Um, you know, slowly, initially, but, uh, but we go in. We can go wherever you want to go from there, but this is kind okay. of big stuff. Yes, that's beautiful. Now, on w the thing that you said there that really catches, and I hope it sticks with a lot of people, is that we desperately need to be on the same page globally about human, what happens. A human narrative. Human, yeah. A human narrative around what are, what's it for? Oh, so that we can be happy, so that we can be prosperous. Like, super good goals. Like, prosperity and peace are freaking awesome goals. But, but ultimately, though. But ultimately, though. But, but for real, though. Like, what do you do from there? You know, that's a real question. And, uh, and it's not obvious what the answer is. Um, I have seen more efforts at potentially positive, like, like utopic brainstorming in fiction as opposed to dystopic, which I, I commend as an exercise. I think it's very challenging, but I commend it. But yeah, I really hope we can get on the same page because what do we, we're gonna, we're gonna think that evolution cuts off from here forever? Like, well, I surely the hominids are the end of all things. Um, well, uh, not surely. Yeah, to actually get this to stick and to get it to become a a United Nations discourse point of post-human. Yeah. That's what I'm working towards, man. I love that one. That one's critical. And it seems like it is, should be on the sustainable development goals. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm literally, I am, like, the hustle is to get there, right? Yeah. And, through whatever means. The UN is one of many yeah, yeah. Mediums. Yeah. I think they're a good one, though. I, I have a lot of respect for the UN. Oh, um, Davos is another one. Yeah, the World, World Economic, Economic Forum, Forum, for sure. Um, you know, I mean, in, uh, the World Bank could potentially be a conduit. Um, I mean, there's there's a bunch. But, uh, but yeah, to have some global discourse around, like, uh, but really people, what, uh, what are we going to do, really, though? We already see it happening in every single aspect of, of, uh, of wealth. Um, being concentrated and artificial intelligence working on behalf of certain Yeah, people. yeah. Th that discourse is massively farther along than it was 18 months ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. Which is awesome, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, th then we're actually solving the, <laughs> the Yeah, we're, we're trying to get to the, we're trying to get to the near-term stuff, right? And that's where we pay our bills is, you know, a bank will want to, you know, do AI with stuff or, or the, uh, you know, the World Bank will be interested in the economic implications of something, but um, but yeah, it'd be cool to get it a little farther. Yes. So now as we talk about, this is, this is a hard thing sometimes for, for people to wrap their minds around. When, for those that have already seen <clears throat> what has happened with the 40, last around 40 years of going from Pong to the photo video realistic um, three-dimensional RPG games that we play. Um, being able to strap yourself into those games is kind of what we're talking about with these virtually designed worlds. Yep. And then one's ability to not only play in Dan's designed world, but also to create one's own world that has yeah. nothing to do with our universe. Completely yep. different laws. Yeah. Uh, uh, bro, we could take this from so many angles. but. Um, there's there's a bunch here. I think that ultimately people don't want anything that people say they want. People want the fulfillment of their drives. Or the, the, the Aristotle, you know, all things are done for happiness analogy is is uh, relevant. But of course, ha happiness boils down to whatever fulfillment of whatever drive. So you know, do, do we really want um, uh, relationships? Do we really want sleep? Do we really want food? Or do we want different kinds of fulfillment, or perceived fulfillment we'll gain from certain kinds of experience. Really, we want varieties of experience that feel like achievement. We want varieties of experience that feel like um, uh, joy. We want varieties of, we want changes in qualia and sense. And when, when that stuff is, is push button, when that stuff's on demand, there is no bigger market for anything outside of perception because, because that's the market for reality. 
because, because that, that's reality. So, so the market for perception is the market. It's the ultimate market. Um, and as we get into eventually neurotech and BMI, which, which I've been, uh, real, that was my introduction to the, into all of this uh, AI world is through there. Um, but even just, just VR and the future steps there, I mean, that's in my opinion where we're headed. And I think that there's, um, uh, Japan is kind of the canary in the coal mine of sort of what happens with the first world. You get rich, there's no meaning because there isn't. Um, and then you, you get sad and you escape into virtual worlds. And I think that that's, that's what the whole rich first world is gonna do. Um, you know, the, a lot of the males anyway. Uh, and that uh, ultimately that's, that's a tension that we'll have to somehow resolve or maybe turn to something constructive. But um, yeah, lots, lots to poke into there. Okay. Off of that, the Qualia catalog, I love that point. That was so interesting. So our ability to just browse through whatever experiences. Yeah, that's what button. people want. People don't want sleep. They don't want girlfriends. They don't want food. They don't want anything. And so when you can give them that thing, that's, that's the end of it. We don't want physical bodies. We don't want to have to cut our nails. We don't want to have to like, I don't know. We, we don't want to have to have relationships to feel happy, right? We don't want to, like maybe we do, right? Maybe, maybe we want relationships, but we don't want to need them. We don't want to hurt if we don't have them in the same ways. We don't want any of the things we ostensibly want. We want variety and qualia. And any technologies that start to vehemently and robustly fulfill that, uh, pharmacologically, uh, brain machine interface, VR, that's the market. The market ends with that. Um, and that is also the way that, that people will extend their abilities and power because that's, that will be cognitive enhancements that will permit them to control more of these technologies. An unenhanced person, you know, maybe 30, 40 years from now, will have essentially no chance of really running the show. Um, but yet, that, that's the deal, the quality of catalog. That's your term, not mine, so no, no, I'm not no. going to steal that one. No, this, this is cool. that there, Andres? No, there's no, um, there's no, there's someone else, uh, Alex K. Chen was like, uh, Alan said neural real estate, that's his term, and I'm just like, dude, none of these are anyone's. All right. They're just coming through. Respectful, respectful position Bro, right there. We're just being, we're vehicles. We are vehicles for the for the ideas and for the selflessness and the, and the projects to be channeled through into the 3D world. Very Emersonian of you. We, 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 taking that on in that sort of an essence, it transcends our ego, it gets us way past any of the, uh, the I'm with you, man, we'll hang with that. Six. Yeah, let's, we'll let's hang with that. with that, I love it. Okay, so quality catalog, it's the push button ability to be able to peruse any ex feelings any experiences that you yeah. want. And, and yeah, that does, because the then market. you can jump right to love. You can jump right to Machu Picchu. You can jump right to the bottom of the ocean. And that's how it starts, but it's not how it ends. So it starts with fulfillments that we think we want because we're idiots. Because, because we only know what monkeys know. We only have the range of qualia that monkeys have. And so if we imagine, let's say like, like crickets, like Fulfilling qualia for crickets, like we'll just make the analogy real quick. Is it, yes, Machu Picchu sex, like I, I really wanna like, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna smack that, like through that glass roof real quick. Okay, so, but let's go down first too, just quickly down uh, into what it's like to be an eagle. Right, and yeah. actually have the quality experience of flying oh. through the sky or the big dolphins or whales, right, or octopus. Right, there's so many other animals or insects to explore. And then, yes, yeah, of yeah, course, shatter through, through, yeah, through yeah, yeah. the roof yep, yep. into, so, yeah. And yeah. There's, there's so many senses that we don't have that maybe other species do, you know, chemical senses of ants or what have you, or, um, you know, uh, dolphins, echolocation, or, I mean, you know, scratching the surface with these ideas, um, you know, the, the dexterity and proprioception of you know lemurs, right? We, we don't, we we can't, we can't do some of the stuff they can do. Uh, but but th so this is a range, and, and we have suppositions around which of these experiences we want. So of the, if we're to select in the catalog, I forget what was it, was it was it Descartes, was it Locke, was it? Now I'm dropping it. But if you only know the concepts of gold and the concept of a duck, you can't imagine anything except for a golden duck or gold and a duck. Like you can only combine the ideas you have. So our quality quality catalog is only going to be of the things that we think we want. Um, but but ultimately, it will. Uh, there's a slippery slope into other realms, other other domains. So we'll we'll want Machu Picchu. We'll want love. But 
if, if we're not hindered by our current hardware, there will be permutations of positive experience to which we are not, not now privy. Just like monkeys are not Sorry. privy to enjoy, let's say, you know, reading Montaigne or, or reading Francis Bacon or something. Like they just don't get that much out of it. Or they, they can't watch like a good stand-up routine and like <laughs> dig it. Or, or oil painting, for example. Um, there are entire realms of those things to which we have zero access. And presuming we can start to creak out at the corners, I think that there will be people who spend most of their time, kind of physical body as husk, spend most of their time, even if they are working within human hardware, experiencing things through senses and through limbs and through like permutations of light and whatnot that humans would never experience in the world of atoms. Yeah, like yeah. it just turns into whatever milieu behooves your your aims, and for most people, that's just the fulfillment of desires. Um, so yeah, the, the market begins with selling people on um, jacuzzis with Mariah Carey, like 1998. You know what I mean? Like that's that's how you sell it. You sell it like that. But 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 that's not where it ends. Yes, yes. Okay. So there's both there's both the uh, the designing of what is in the Qualia library or catalog, so our ability to go and design it ourselves, and then there's our ability to go and immerse into what other people are designing. I'm really curious as to how this would actually work f getting us into uh, the, or these 3D bodies, meat puppets, into that <laughs> Qualia cataloging ability. How do we, how do we get us into yeah, that? Yeah, it's phasic. So, um, I, well, I suspect it'll be phasic, right? Like I'm, I'm speaking like I'm uh, you know, prognosticating and doing anything other than prognosticating. Um, I, uh, the, the meat puppet, I, I like the monkey suit. <laughs> the I monkey use the monkey suit, suit on the rig. Yeah, yeah just the trapped, earth suit, just yeah. stuck in the monkey suit. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this will first get there through, through VR, much more robust VR than we have now. But I think that VR for gaming is, a, is, a, is a, a really limited use case. I think that when VR becomes normal is, I, I, I have predicted, and we'll see if this is the case, could be horrendously wrong here, that when VR becomes productive, in other words, when you essentially sort of have to use it to do certain kinds of jobs, or, you know, like, like so I have like three monitors up at home, when I can have, like a screen here, and I can have as many monitors as I want, running as many programs as I want at whatever font size and whatever volume as I want in a much more, you know, with, with less plastic and glass being used and less energy being used in the future, right? That's very hard to computationally to bring all of that into this small lens, but eventually it won't be, won't be horribly challenging. That once you kind of can't not use it, just like cell phones, it's like it was sort of novel, the cool kids were texting, but then it's like, well, you need to get food, don't you? You know, you, you need to like, Check your email, don't you? You, know, you need to make that sales call, don't you? And then at some point, everybody has to. When that social pressure from the, the pragmatic perspective um, comes into VR, I suspect that's when the going in will sort of begin. Mm -hmm. So there would be like a phase one of, of sorts. Yeah, um, so this is like phase two of going in from the cell phone, smartphone yeah, era. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it is a phase two. Lord knows what phase it is. But, yeah, um, yeah. but I, I, I suspect that yeah, we're we're on the we're riding the we're we're riding the uh, the toboggan here of um of going in. You um, also made it clear that it is that again, it's that you become less productive if you choose to not use it. Yeah, and you get access to less experiences, uh, less productivity. It's a, yeah. So you are societal, the cultural push is to use it, yes, you, yes. You can't, you can't not, I mean, technology is a language, right? If you really want to like, uh, you know, you can't not speak, you can't, like, how are you going to think? And, and so, you know, these will be, this is, this is extended cognition, right? This is distributed cognition, and this is, this is kind of where these things in, in many respects are headed. I suspect that gaming will be a reasonably isolated use case, and that when the pragmatic pull occurs, mm -hmm. and you kind of can't not, Right, to, to leverage the double negative there. Um, th th that's sort of like the, when the toboggan ride starts to really kind of heat up a little mm -hmm. bit or r really speed up. Um, but but that's, that's just VR. That's just, you know, um, uh, you know like, like eyeglasses type stuff. Um, from there, VR will get to the point where VR is not um, analog, may or may not be the right term, but I'm going to use it. Analog meaning like y you're receiving it. And, and someone else is giving it. Like, okay, I have VR and I can see my screens or VR and I can like see a movie or I can browse through a book really fast, have all the, the good stuff kind of brought to me. Um, eventually, 
these VR environments will be uh, designed to behoove our own aims. Whether our aims are, I'm anxious and I don't want to be anxious, and you can enter some kind of a VR space, maybe have some kind of EEG of some sort, and, and um, go through whatever experience you require in order to kind of calm down or maybe get excited or whatever the, the, the case may be, or maybe learn something. In the future, I would hope that I could say in VR, you know, just put it on and be like, um, I'd like to um, learn about the French Revolution through the perspective of St. Just uh, uh, in 45 minutes and, and just have a programmatically generated biography of the man uh, who by all accounts should have been more prominent than Bonaparte had he not had his head cut off. Um, just, just get a take of the guy. It's so hard to cobble together all those perspectives, but they're all out there, and a computer system could hypothetically put them together. There's been movies of the man, and so we at least have some actors that could kind of play him out. And so when we can call upon whatever we want to call upon, um, whether we ask that of our email, uh, like, oh, well, for, for all the sales, you know, for all the accounts that, are, that haven't raised even 10 million yet, like, we're going to send some permutation of this, but, but fill it out with whatever their last press release was and yada, yada. When, when what we command and what we receive are both tailored and customized based on our own aims, that'll be sort of leaning into, you know, what I'm kind of calling a phase two. So this is the programmatically generated everything world, right? Where you can say, um, geez, it would be neat to, you know, be in a jacuzzi with Mariah, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're so, right on the, on the, especially on the learning side of things too, to be able to just call forth a, a five minute video lesson of 100%. some topic. Another one is just the, we, we using the, the meat sticks on the devices. So is vile, it's so petty. bandwidth is just not Oh, the not QWERTY there. keyboard is like the, the, it's like the chisel. It's like, it's just, it's just, it's like, it's like, caveman noises like <laughs> yeah. like it's yeah. fucking it's offensive but yeah, it's as good as we what got this is po yeah. has is possible yeah. when i think the message get the message done just like that yeah yeah, what, yeah okay so th but that's phasing into the next yep, yeah, and, and yeah. then this is this this eventually i would suspect will will lean towards advanced haptic experiences to go along with this kind of vr and ai um at some point at some point I suspect that uh, between haptic stuff, between VR, like AI enhanced VR, the programmatically generated everything mm -hmm. idea, the deep fakes, but on steroids and in all directions. Again, like I said, with Robespierre, but with anything else. And then how, I think the glasses one, or slash optics, right, there's so many ways to explore that yeah. one in the computational uh, capacity also being able to be outsourced to the cloud, there's, so that way you can remain, right, so there's getting that. There, getting there, the, getting there. And then, but the one that I also want to hear your thoughts on to help people with the, with the capacity to visualize it. How do we get into this full-scale haptic suit that helps us with that yeah, touch? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think that increasingly, again, as work permits us to wear this, as we can garner some, maybe admittedly in the beginning middling, but, but at some point um, non-middling experience of relationships in this, like our ability to, to relate, to connect, eventually there will be programmatically generated friends that are just better than your friends are, mm -hmm. right? I'm not even knocking my friends, like I love my I friends, love right? My friends, That's like one of yeah. like the few, like the rare, like, yeah. like oh, th like this monkey suit thing isn't like as horrible as like it but normally is. But imagine if your friends were constantly uh, in their like peak state of stimulating the, the, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, but like, a bajillion a fold, bajillion right? Fold. Like imagine if you could be like, oh, like I want someone with all the insights of fucking Pericles and uh, you know, um, uh, you know Einstein and whatever, and and to have no none of their own personal goals and only want to coach me on what this yeah. particular objective is, right? Give me a break. Yeah. I mean, it's just really hard to compete with that. Now it's going to be hard to get there, but man, programmatically generated anything three years ago compared to now is like insane. It's just insane progress. Um, and now, whether we can do that with personalities, I think is gonna be a challenge, but I, I suspect that it'll happen. I think that as we start to fulfill more and more things through those means, people are going to sort of be in, I predict eventually there'll be some kind of reclined environments designed to go into this mode, right? We're not, gonna, we're okay. not gonna be sitting up in office chairs wearing these things. We're gonna have somewhere where we can comfortably, right, our back isn't gonna hurt, yeah. and we can just be in the real world, which is the world of perception, because it's the only real world, Bang, right there. Now, at some point, haptics are going to fit into whatever that thing okay, is. Okay, so okay, so, so, the, it's a, so it's it's a way, we are potentially going to be laying flat so that we're comfortable, potentially even in some sort of a, like a 
float tank or a zero gravity chamber I, I, or something? I think, I think at some point, I mean, it might it, it might be at the level where BMI starts to come in, where where like we're not only laying back, but you got the matrix plug action going on. Yeah. Um, it may be before or after that, but I predict many people live in a a husk like condition, whereby even the excretion of waste will occur in this environment, and there will be some setup. It's a prediction. There will be some degree of a setup where we just don't want to leave and leave when when we need to. That there will be some way. <laughs> It just, it just, it, it, this is all pushing me towards thinking that we are already in that environment. Yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, we're we're already in that exact I, thing I that remember. you're describing. That when you when you say we're in the designed world, leveling up, you know, we're building our experience points and our catalog of yeah. qualia. That's how is that not already and, what's happening right and, now? And nobody, nobody wants to go to the bathroom. Nobody wants to sleep. What do you want? You want the fulfillment of your drives, which is whatever quality you want in front of you, and that qualia may involve learning things, creating things, achieving things, or it just may involve bliss in all directions. Either way, it doesn't involve trimming your damn fingernails. It doesn't involve going to the bathroom. It doesn't involve, um, I don't know, maybe it doesn't involve physical friends at some point. Like, I'm not an anti-human, anti-friend guy. That's not what I'm saying. Like, like uh, I, I but a programmatically generated at some at yeah, some point friend. like it is what it is right you're not you're not bad for you know thinking language is useful or the wheel is useful or you know um, the typewriter was useful or whatever else you you're not bad to suspect that some of these things will be useful and fulfilling in their own way as well um, people will get to pick exactly what they want to browse versus yeah. in the physical world you can't and that's your whole atoms versus bits yeah, thing atoms are just so so lame and and I mean like you can use them to build these other worlds but like wow they're just they're just so cold and uncaring and uh, uh, not that like bits are caring but but it's, it's just at, at least there's some like we've done pretty well designing the world of atoms we've done pretty well mm -hmm. you know me and you we got running water whenever we want it yeah, we yeah. got these funky devices and whatnot like really masterful use of, of atoms um, but but bits will just permit so much more of what we want and potentially less of what we don't want. There's obviously new insidious forces that will enter the world of bits that aren't possible in the world of atoms. Um, but but I, I predict that that the the blossoming of the possible in in the beneficial sense will be far too good to ignore. Okay, so then uh, with that phases, we're 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 thinking that the virtual worlds get extremely good and the computational capacity here, then the haptics come in. Then the state of the brain computer interfaces, the brain machine interfaces. Uh, so then we're, I want, I'm really interested to know how that technology is actually going to be able to, to work exactly. How do you take that, what's happening up here with our experience and connect it to a computer and then be able to enhance it. And then that kind of opens us up to all these other worlds and, and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, well, do you want to go into Sort of the, I, I think the end game of all of that, by the way, is eventually like the body already is a husk. There's this uh, someone, I forget what biography it was of Emerson, but someone had described Emerson as, as that his body was only the office of his mind. In other words, it was just like a physical space to house, you know, the real stuff, the thinking. Um, and, and I think already that's sort of where we're where we're headed. I, and eventually that that would, should it be possible, lead to the upload scenario. Um, it, how, how do you think we're gonna? How do you think we're gonna have an interface? How does the mind get interface with the computer? Do we have like a technical I, understanding I, I, of how that will work? I, uh, I, I am far from the man for that job. Although I will say, since 2013, um, when I first started interviewing the people at BrainGate, so at Brown University. Um, who, who did the early work on controlling a robotic arm to grab food and eat it and whatnot for folks who are paraplegic. And um, a lot of that work is fascinating. The limitations are super evident, you know? Um, and and the, 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 the necessity to retrain these models to sort of understand the circuitry and the response of the brain to some kind of, you know, invasive uh, uh, substrate in the mind, um, like the the synapses around it sort of not responding the same way as they used to and needing to kind of like rejigger things to some degree and seeing how kind of oblong and haphazard it is um it's really clear that we have a ways to go i don't think any of this is is maybe a, you know a decade off i think we're going to be 
I think, I think it will become more and more evident that we're going in, and I think it will become more and more evident that whoever owns a substrate is, 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 uh, is the man in the colloquial sense uh, of, of like the bad big guy. Um, okay, so, so we're going to let the creative uh, powers of however the brain-computer interfaces end up working, it's going to, it's likely we're moving that direction and it's just, we're pretty certain this can happen and there's going to be some creative permutations of how it ends up su successfully um, entering into the world. But this is kind of the general, hopefully 50-ish years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, would, I would say, you know, I would say within, like, if we don't have some semblance of potentially available BMI within 25 or 30 years, I'll be somewhat surprised. Like c consumer accessible, maybe wealthy, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, within within 25 or 30, I'll actually be surprised yeah, yeah. Uh, given the trajectory of things. But yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, it'd be super cool to have folks from Neuralink and BrainGate and whatever else. I mean, just the fact that we have, for m years of interviewing these people, everyone was focused exclusively on the ameliorative applications. That is to say, people with strokes, people with Parkinson's, et cetera, right? That's where all of the money was going. And even when I would poke and prod them off the mic, but really though, I mean, what could this stuff do? Cold, like that was not the focus, overtly not the focus. And now you have Kernel, you have Neuralink, and, and there will be others. Um, and I think, you know, if we keep kind of cracking away, um, we'll, we'll get somewhere. Um, but yeah, the, the exact hows on that, I think are rightfully challenging. And another one of the things is that it gives us control, right? We were talking about being able to browse through the catalog and find whatever experiences we want. People want to be in full control. So if you do want to clip nails, go for it. If you don't, then Happy go. birthday, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good for you. Yeah, and then, and then the, other, the other one that I think you mentioned is really good is just that you, you do get this kind of like this one directional love from friends or family or, and it's just much different than needing to uh, give love in the other direction as well in the kind of the reciprocal altruism. And I'm not saying this is conjuring a virtue, right? I'm just saying it's fulfilling drives. And I'm just saying yeah, yeah. that that's what people are doing. It's fulfilling drives. That's been your phrase that you've been using over and over again. So the ca quality catalog is about m me being able to fulfill whatever drive whenever I want. Yeah, and the, I think the only chance that we would have at, at greater degrees of volition, should we have any to start with, um, would be extending sort of the base brain that we have, which is based on all of these drives. I think if we want freedom, we don't want freedom with, with the lizard brain at, at the bottom. We, we want freedom in a more overt sense. I'm not saying that's easy, but I, it's very clear to me that freedom or control within the limited hardware and software that we have is is kind of a kind of a paltry idea okay so then once we do get to this hopefully let's say uh, commercialized state of being able to tap into um, uh, the super super intelligence in let's say uh, 550 years something around those lines um, so then that really gives us the ability to kind of like with a joystick and a program to just be able to think what we want to generate and then to be able to jump into those experiences. And that's kind of where we're at with this programmatically generated everything. And then it's sort of like who owns it. You okay, know, so now question. here's the next question. Yep. Why don't you give us your thoughts on the who owns it? Yeah, yeah. So the, the substrate monopoly hypothesis here, uh, this, my general idea, is that um, in the next... Uh, for, the, for the remainder of this century, the, the grand um, conflicts, be they, b between great powers, right? Like Luxembourg and like a 200 person company in like, I don't know, Taiwan or something like are out of this picture. The great powers. So in the commercial side, that would be your Googles and your Baidus and, and whatnot. Um, on the, the na nation side, that's, it's pretty much just the US and China. Maybe at some point India will come into the game. Maybe at some point the US will f fade off uh, of keeping idiots. Um, but uh, great power conflict, um, com um, militarily, economically, and technologically, in the next, for the remainder of the century, is ultimately about controlling the substrate that houses the powerful AI and houses the majority of human experience. Because, mo you know, most of the first world is going to be in some permutation of this. It might not lo look like that, right? Maybe there still will be screens, but th the virtual world will be where things really happen. It will be real. It will be very, very real. It will be where the majority of important things happen, business or otherwise. Um, so the controlling of uh, the totality of human experience, owning the, the, the virtual ecosystems that are programmatically creating um, you know, what, what 
most of humanity is experiencing, that is controlling reality, like in the most direct sense. Controlling other people's perception is controlling reality. So that uh, the ultimate end game, should you want the top of the dominance hierarchy on Earth, would be to control the substrate that houses all of that stuff. And so if a company is, is going to aim to you know, win in that kind of grand sense, um, then, then that's how you do it. If a country would want to, then that's how they would do it. China is certainly farther along that road, uh, at least culturally, than the United States is in terms of um, uh, you know, the, the ability to kind of put people into an ecosystem that's managed. Um, but yeah, that, that's, the, the, that's the hypothesis. The hypothesis, whoever loads you in and whoever kind of manages whatever is programmatically generating your experience is the deity. Okay, and I want to continue going into substrate monopoly um, in a moment because at the same time there's this really important principle to layer in here which is that it's as though there's a difference between the uh, roaring into the, the qualia catalog with the intention to just go into whatever blissful states possible and forget the real world. Yep. And then the ones that go into qualia catalog and explore and experience, meanwhile pull it back and look at Oh, is it Google or Baidu? Is it China or the United States? So it's yeah. so it's still keeping a, at least a finger on the you call this the lotus eaters versus the world eaters. Yeah, yeah. So there, I, I think that there's going to be this dynamic where I, I think most people, and rightfully so, you know, if we look at the great religions, uh, you know, which which I, I I don't necessarily use as like super important reference points, like oh why why it was written a long time ago, you know, so it must be. But but I think that there's something to it that that these stories have have persisted and have had credence. Um, there's there's uh, you know sort of breaking the veil in Christianity, you know, this this sort of veil of tears uh, where the world is suffering, but there there's sort of this world beyond it. Such a similar notion in uh, you know Buddhism and in Hindu traditions and and whatnot. The, this idea of kind of at last breaking beyond what we know as the state of nature, the state of anxiety, the state of drives that have, have perpetuated meat from doing meat stuff. And, and on some degree, anything with living parts, even with cell walls, from doing living part stuff. Um, so the, the escaping of that world, of, of the state of nature to some degree, is sort of like the great promise and hope, right? The heavens, so to speak. And so being able to, to bring that down to, to earth is, is I think what most people are after. Um, I think I think that's why people do the majority of what they do. But at the same time, I suspect that um, there are are some people who would be of the belief that if you are entering a world like that, and someone else ultimately has built the technology that's generating whatever you want to, you know, uh, generate, um, and someone else is controlling the substrate, the physical substrate where your experiences are all housed and from whence your, all of your experience come from, that, that at the very end of the day, that person is safer than you. And mm -hmm. I think that that is a, a right supposition. Now, I'm not here to argue that everybody should try to get to the top of that pyramid. I hope that there's some way to square that circle and we can blossom to whatever is post-human, um, when it makes sense, how it makes sense, um, in a way that makes sense. But, but I, I do suspect that many people will, will not be okay with eating the lotus, with, with simply experiencing creativity or um, having the feelings of kind of exploration and whatnot. They'll want to use cognitive enhancement and, and VR and these other substrates to extend their ability to potentially wield control and ultimately to, to control the substrate um, or, or to at least persist, have some kind of a, a more tangible impact rather than a qualia tornado in their own isolated little computational sugar cube that that uh, that will will nigh exist after they are gone. Um, th Damn. This is the supposition. Yeah, because the the desire to want to uh, be a part of the bigger picture outside of the sugar cube is such a again just the drive that we for some people for yeah. some people and we could potentially decide to not want that drive but it just it, it, and just in general how how to actually make it so that is it is it does it end up becoming a hierarchy with a with a monopolistic substrate that has a bunch of sugar cubes in it and some of them are able to reflect back and say hey we still know that you're in control why are you more safe and more powerful than we are and how do we figure out how do if we start the conversations with the United Nations this full circle with the companies with these think tank approach how do we jump into the substrate in a way that is potentially owned uh, and d decisions made by 
Oh, by, by, by all. This would be the dream, right? This yeah. would be the dream. Um, I, I think that that would be the dream. I think that there, there would need to be some kind of a genuine cosmopolitan spirit to get that done. Again, I think the two big questions are what's after people and how do we get there without you know, all dying violently? Um, and I think that um, some degree of global governance and same-pagedness for humanity would, would have to occur. I think the default state for the development of all these technologies is kind of an arms race dynamic. Rightfully so, state of nature. I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying I'm perpetuating it. I'm not saying I, I, uh, I love nothing more than autonomous weapons. Um, but I'm saying that that's how it works, sort of, unless we can come to some other agreement. And even then, it's trepidatious. You know, the, what's, the, what's the saying? That, um, the, the, the kingdom long united will at some point divide, the kingdom long divided, right? So it, it, we, can only, we can only hold that together for so long, but hopefully we could have uh, uh, that tentative peace for long enough to bump ourselves into blissful qualia land for as long as we got. Um, but uh, that's the tough part. It seems as though the spiritual enlightenment of us to a degree of self-actualization and transcendence, an understanding of unity and oneness, that if we can get this to children at young enough ages, that we could potentially more slow down and think our way to the substrates um, than the, and simultaneously compete for the best ideas, but in a way that doesn't get us to arms races where people have to unnecessarily suffer. I, I think, I'm gonna push on that idea a little bit. In my most optimistic, I'm completely with you, and I will say this much, as much as I rail and lament against the particular vices and uh, luxuries of, of and, and, and um, entitled feebleness of the, millen the millennial sort of world, of which I'm part, um, the softness, I think that the cosmopolitan inclination is very natural uh, for, for millennials. And I think that as millennials come to run things, um, they might need like avocado toast and like, like other lame millennial type stuff. But, but I think that they will be real cool cross culture compared to let's say their grandparents. Sure. Um, who, who might in some cases still have some sway in, in, in some parts and of the world And then what will now. their kids and grandkids look like in terms of their ethics being really evolved? A hundred percent. Maybe the, they will demand that world peace. I, I, uh, I in, in an optimistic world, I'm with you. In a non-optimistic, uh, you know, if I'm real cold with myself, I wonder if evolved is, is necessarily the right word. I think it certainly is kind, it certainly is friendly. You and I certainly look virtuous by touting it, but to suspect that in some ultimate sense it is higher, I think is sort of pre presuming that we understand what's going on, when, when in fact, Whenever, so if, if we go from, you know, the monkeys can't understand Shakespeare and then you have 3% genetic difference humans, mm -hmm. um, when we do that next 3% genetic difference, any ideas you and I have about ethics are, are, are gobbledygook. Um, that would be sort of their, their highest level would be gobbledygook uh, because there will be grander modes and means of valuing, grander modes and means of understanding morality uh, when, whenever we access that mm -hmm. higher degree of intelligence. So I want to think that like it's all unity, man, you know, I want to get like real Eastern in like the cool sense, and it certainly appears uh, mega virtuous. Uh, but but I, I actually wonder whether that's evolved or not. Um, dangerous thoughts, but uh, I'm just trying to be frank with myself. Yeah, I have similar feelings to you in that front. That there's no sort of way to just uh, uh, assure oneself that it is one or the other. Um, but it does. That's a really good point, and I, I really love the idea of trying to um, get there. But the so do I. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm dragging you into like a sad place, Alan. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Let's let's go into something that you'll enjoy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, you're you, you bring up you bring up very good points though, and um, and we'll see how the ethics evolve. Does nature too. want us all to? unite and be friendly? Or does nature want us to just rip each other's heads off? Um, you know, like when I look out well, into nature, like I actually done. super don't know. The evolution's not done. Well, 100%. And so that's, that's one of the questions is that you look back and you see, yeah, there's a lot of evolution that had, uh, that had war in it um, and violence. At the same time, you look at some of the evolution and there wasn't that. And you also look at what could happen moving forward and is it potentially that a civilization that, in, that figures out how to be at complete peace 
and transcendent harmony with one another um, and their substrates that they dive into, that the ones that figure out how to do that uh, in the most kind way possible, loving way possible, those are the ones that become pinnacle civilizations, the ideal example of a civilization on a rock. And the, the meek ones, shall yeah. inherit the earth, said Alan. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I have my fingers crossed that the cosmopolitan spirit will continue to breathe its life into, uh, you know, minds and that we'll be able to get on some degree of same pagedness around what us monkeys want to do in the big game. Yeah, um, but the competition does move it along and it gets the good, it gets um, good ideas going, but slowing down and thinking is also very important along the way. How, how do we transition uh, from this, these substrate monopolies that are happening? Would you call these substrate monopolies super intelligences? Um, uh, could be. I, I think that, you know, in the, um, in the reclined scenario, which I doubt would be all the way back, although, like, there's some ergonomics expert that would probably understand that game. I'm far from that. Um, even at that level, I think, so right now, Facebook and Google quite obviously wield vastly more power than, than a great number of nations um, in terms of just global influence, uh, of culture, Probably of Probably more than 100 money. or 150 even other nations. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And they're super aware of that. Like I, I was speaking with a woman who's very high up at the United Nations, um, uh, just crashed at her house and like got to talking about like the real stuff. You know what I mean? Like the, the stuff we couldn't talk about in uh, in uh, you know on the mic um, with the translators and um, she had mentioned being at the World Economic Forum and, and talking to um, uh, one of the Google guys and <clears throat> uh, just sort of addressing very frankly like the 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 potential or asking very frankly do, do you believe that your company is more powerful than the nations and just sort of seeing like the most knowing possible smile and nod but then like a kind of different trajectory to the conversation, but like a full-blown acknowledgement of it, right? Yeah. Because th these are the folks that own the virtual worlds that we live in. I'm not even calling them bad, right? I think it's normal to say the powerful are bad and the weak are good. I, I think everybody is self-interested. The story ends there. So amoral, selfish, egoic animals. Not necessarily, n amoral is different than immoral, right? Amoral is just void of morality. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I think that writ large, those people know that that's where they're there. Zuckerberg bought Oculus, I think thinking VR was gonna take off faster, but think about it, my good man. When your relations to your coworkers and to your family and to, I don't know, even the people upstairs are just better and more immersive here, Zuck owning that space is the big game, man. That's, that's getting to the, right, we talked about what the top is, that's getting to the top, that's getting to the real place. Um, and I'm not, saying, I'm not saying it's good to get there, I'm not saying everyone should be vying for it, but it would make sense. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's companies that are, that are already, I think there's firms that are already there and are gonna wanna kinda continue that momentum forward. Um, and some of them are pursuing the virtual reality, augmented reality, HoloLens 2 route, right? The Microsoft as well. So some of them are pursuing that route. Meanwhile, the kernel and Neuralinks are going directly for the brain, which is also very interesting. So there's kind of like a, which one of those two will get to Yeah, there's a get competing the, ecosystem of uh, extending intelligence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so if we do call those things kind of little, um, in a sense, they are their own, uh, substrates that are maybe they're they're kind of pre super intelligence maybe yeah I, I think they might be managed by people initially when we're just in the recliners it might still be people at the top like Zuck and Paige and whoever else and not and not bad people I'm not calling Zuck a bad person I'm just saying it might be people at the top in China it'll be very clearly the people at the top in China um, it'll have to be a party thing um, uh, so it, it may just be people, but I think eventually it will have to be cognitively enhanced people if that becomes viable at all. And eventually, whatever manages the substrate, so long as we don't blow ourselves up, will be something post-human. Yeah. Whatever, you know, whatever with big spidery legs matrix style manages all the compute uh, will, will be something drastically beyond, beyond people. But I think it, it might start just like an evolution of what it is now. So it doesn't have to be super intelligence. I think long enough game, if we don't all die and blow ourselves up, um, that would be what it would get to. Yes. Okay. And then I want to know about the kind of, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but the super intelligence itself, the substrates themselves, 
This uh, replaces the top that are the humans at the even at the top in their positions replaces them as well. And then how do we ensure that the, 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 the super intelligence, that the transhumanist transition, that this process, that it happens in, in a way that we've made uh, that maximizes our uh, potential to even continue being around? And I'll give you a frank addressing of your question and then I'll question your question. Uh, the frank addressing of your question, I think the best possible scenario for us um, in terms of the transhuman transition, the best possible scenario for, for us as selfish individual consciousnesses would be to, through uploading or whatever other means may never be possible, some degree of BMI, exist borderline perpetually in whatever permutations of blissful ultimate created deity experience we as an individual uh, consciousness want. That would be as high an end game as we could hope for. The very idea that cognitively enhanced people will like uh, get together and like, um, like uh, agree on things and sort of get along on earth I think is completely inviolable. Th because if we think about um, things that think differently, things that are let's say 50% um, smarter than baseline hominids, just the idea that the same degree of human peace and prosperity that we share now, tentative as it is, would in any way persist is, is, is lame. We're going to have to do all this. Our expansion into vastly greater degrees of creativity and capability is going to have to happen in virtual worlds because if it happens in the physical world, we're killing each other. Um, I'm just, just calling the shots on that one. I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, so it's going to have to happen virtually. And the best case scenario long term is we're just digitized, the uploading, and then eventually digested. At some point, whatever manages that substrate will have better stuff to do with the com compute that we are. Or like a sun will expand and like eat us or something. But it, the best we have is digitized and digested. And as many hyper sped up years, as many hyper sped up billions of years of mega expansive quality of our individual consciousness is as good as it gets and then we're digested. That's as, that's as good as it gets. That I think would be mm -hmm. the pivotal end game of, of the transhuman transition. Should we, should we aim to maintain some semblance of the seed of our own unique sentient bubble that, that we sort of live in? Um, there is a question though as to whether the goal of the transhuman transition is uh, the happiness of the monkeys. Um, it, it, now, now this is bad people ideas, right? I'm, I'm t what I should do, Alan, I mean, this is being recorded, so what, what I should do is say that why certainly the happiness of hominids is ultimately the, the moral outcome that all of us should shoot for for eternity. And of course, billions and billions of years from now, when there's vastly more intelligent things than people, the most preeminently important consideration of all future intelligence will be the happiness of the monkeys. This, this would be a position of virtue. This would signal to you, of course, that, that I'm a good person, um, but I'm actually not sure about that. Sort of long ball, just long ball, right? Um, like whatever chimps thought was the highest thing, whatever crickets thought was the highest thing, just wasn't the highest thing when there was something to think of higher things. And so at the end of the day, is it, if it is utilitarian stuff, right? Let's pretend that the end game, right? The machine wakes up and says, I've conceived of with, with you know, a planet-sized compute, I've conceived of all ways of, of morally measuring the good. And as it turns out, utilitarianism is right. Ye, ye little hominids, ye Jeremy Bentham's of the world, why, why how smart you were, you little chimps. Um, but but you, you hit on it, and you know what? Now I'm gonna maximize it. The maximization of utility does in no way uh, has to do with hominid well-being, right? You, you could hypothetically build positive qualia in a much more efficient sense without having to maintain at, if, if optimizing utility is the goal, my unique conscious string, my memories of playing Nintendo 64 as a child, you know what I mean, and like eating string cheese and stuff, th that's wasted compute. There's a way to just shake more pure bliss out of just like computronium than there is by housing individual sentiences. So if utilitarianism is the goal, monkey happiness may or may not be. My, mm -hmm. my supposition is that it's something vastly beyond utilitarianism yeah. that you can't think of and I can't think of. Yeah, yeah. And with the merge scenario, there is potentially uh, the embeddedness of our existence within the super intelligence so that we can kind of be in the playground of it to come up with these and uh, feel the creativity of the super intelligence. Maybe there is a unity element there, right? Yeah. Maybe there's a way to become part of the great, right? And there's all these religious analogies to that, but 
you might be onto something. Yeah, that could be nice. The the complete merging of the humans with the super intelligence, um, that could be quite nice. Yeah, and that could give us qualia catalog, eradication of suffering, no substrate monopolies, just the what complete oneness potentially. There could be a good uh, side of this coin, like a really, really good side of this of this coin as well. Um, but I, I also do see a lot of what you were poking at throughout the convo. Yeah, monkey happiness, not, not sure. I think it's, it's, it's what we should shoot for today, no doubt about it. A billion years from now, I am, I am, I am not certain about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about we do um, simulation questions? Okay. Because, because I know that um, we didn't get to get to these last two questions the first time we sat down together. So are we in a simulation? Um, so I, I have a, I have a, uh, a, a uh, response to this. Um, the simulation argument is jarring if you have ever considered yourself in base reality in the first place. Mm. So if you've thought of yourself in base reality for a, for a long time, then it's, it's a jarring argument. Mm -hmm. um, it, if, if you've been agnostic about like the floor underneath your feet, uh, then like, like uh, who cares? Um, and, and so it's only jarring if you've considered yourself to be in base reality. Like I, I have, I have I, I'm unable to escape Hume's fork. Right, like the, there's things that are true in and of themselves, like a triangle has three sides, you know what I mean? And, and then there's, there's perception of which, of which all could be naught, right? Of which all could be the, the Cartesian demon dancing different things in front of me. Um, like if, if you're there, then the simulation argument is just not, not a big deal. Um, I, I would also suspect, it may be the case, but I would say it's a super anthropomorphic analogy as well in my in my uh, my own supposition like we use the analogy of video games right like imagine if a cricket could imagine something grand right it would be we talked about a duck and gold right it would be like a golden duck so w what do we have well, me and you have computers right we have we have compute that that builds a virtual world and and we suspect that in some ultimate universal sense that that this is this same right that that the gods have compute and that like, maybe, maybe that they type or something. Uh, the idea that, that sort of our, any analogy that we know, any golden duck that we can conceive of is the actual big game is like paltry nominal gobbledygook. Paltry nominal gobbledygook. It's just as likely to be pink mist, pink mist under the bed of like an ogre as it is to be like a computer running a simulation. It's like, it's, it, it's the exact same level of likeliness. Like, we're crickets, and we're trying to imagine the big game. Like, we don't get it. The, the only answer is access higher intelligence and try to figure it out, you idiot. That is the only answer. There is no other possible answer than that. And so the simulation argument for me is, uh, I just, I don't care. So, so we gain a greater degree of intelligence, potentially even to the degree of the super intelligence, and then we're able to really understand what it would be like to compute with wildest imaginations, whatever, run these different permutations of civilizations, orbiting stars, or even not civilizations orbiting stars, but things that are out, wildly outside the Outside of our physics, outside of atoms. Um, yes. and, and the answer may never be, Alan, that we figure out what it is. Oh, you know what? Now that we're the size of a sun with our compute, uh, y you know, it, we're not living in a simulation. We're living in a, my guess is that just goes on forever, that there are always edges of never knowing and that mm. eventually there's like heat death or something, but we at least explore feebly on our way there. Uh, maybe there is some way out, right? Maybe there's some way out of this, of this um, ultimately catastrophic universal scenario that we're in. And, 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 but, but of course, we would, need, we would need a lot of compute to get there. And the last question, Dan, is what is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oh, geez. Maybe ideas? Um, it's kind of an escapist take on, like, the world because it's the conception of something beyond it. But... Um, I don't know. That's, that's where my mind goes immediately. You know, I could say tulips, probably a better, better, uh, better par for the course answer. But um, yeah, may, maybe, maybe ideas, maybe ideas. I don't know. I don't know. Um, do, do you mean this in like a non-abstract way? Like you want me to talk about like 
things that I find beautiful just like visually. In whatever sense is uh, best for you. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, that's probably it from, for me, my good man. I, I think that's, uh, I think there's always a hope that, that, that whatever those are will be beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the swing I'll take. That's where I'll stand on that. Ideas are the most beautiful thing. Okay, cool. And I also like seeing you in the state of kind of like surrendering to not knowing. It's nice because <laughs> you had you had it throughout the convo. You were just like, I feel real firm about that simulation deal, man. Like I, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to go hard on somebody who has a firm stance on that. But I just feel like, ooh, monkeys talking, ooh, yeah, yeah, like that's yeah. that's that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I, I hear you. Civilization is in fact that um, the collaboration of the monkeys building the world, and it's it's. We're good monkeys. We're valuable we're, monkeys. I love monkeys. Thinking of intelligence that surpasses us with the creative potential to explore what be, exists beyond this world and all the potentials yeah. creatively is just so beautiful. And I agree with you. Um, let's. Okay, so yeah, you wanted to ask me. I had me. one last question for you. Yes, sir. Man. Yes, All right. Yes. So um, you're, you're asking me about simulations. Let me grill you a little bit. Uh, this is the simulation. What, what is the end game of the simulation? Like, yeah, what, 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 is, what is the end game? It's a good question. So, yeah, right now we're featuring tons of different people at the edge of their fields, at the edge of knowledge, We're trying to make it really relatable and inspire other people to get engaged and inspired. It's good to at least um, find people that message us from around the world that are saying things like, oh, I changed my trajectory to care more about that field that I watched a video about. And so that at least is, I think, getting people more interested in science, technology, art, um, and, and just getting people in education that's not paywalled. And um, yeah, and so that's at least that. And then the end, I mean, end game, right? I don't even know tomorrow or the next day, right? Uh, um, <laughs> but there's some things in the vision, like we do love Cambridge and we'd love to um, have a recording studio, second one out here on the East Coast. Um, and that's hopefully 2020. Um, and then hopefully as well, helping make you know, community creative warehouses is another interesting thing that we care about a lot. So bringing a together, warehouse? like bringing together young people, maybe like as young as like 12 years old up until like maybe 35, something like that. And kind of like having people live together under um, like a big uh, warehouse where they have different like studio rooms with production equipment, um, maybe 3D printing stuff, art stuff, rock walls, gardens, all different types of things in this community place for tinkering and for playing and engineering. and. Um, creative work and so creative warehouses potentially around the world we want to fill sports stadiums with curious intellectuals for full day multidisciplinary events meditation science comedy all types of cool things like that these are all ideas and and it's really hard in a lifetime to be able to bring forth all of them and so we'll see what it ends up uh, evolving into but um, but one thing I know that I, I feel really good about is that I kind of like being um, in a state of of like perpetual service. I've really realized that like I really want to be in a state of perpetual service and and the and it just it also feels really weird trying to prop up like and I have mentors that have really been helping me a lot with this but um, yeah, ego being ego driven um, and material driven is not healthy for one's psyche, and and um, being service driven and being really uh, connected to the the nice love and compassion and care is what drives, I think, me and, uh, yeah. It's like a Bronson Alcott over here. You'll have to Google it. Um, in terms of, of getting people engaged in science, it doesn't surprise me if people email you and say like, whoa, like I really got more into that or pick my college major or like whatever, because I know, you know, what, what was I able to Google picking a major? Like not a lot. Uh, and this stuff is significantly more engaging getting people more interested in science and technology, ultimately you would hope people would what? You know, the, the warehouse, the education stuff you're doing now, yeah, yeah. in this selfless spirit, you would hope would conjure X within people. There's at least a theme. How do you describe that's that? Yeah, that's a good question. So I do think that you get to a sense of objective truth by caring about science. I think that that can help generate a desire for kind of like that overview effect, that, that understanding of, of the unity, I think that it is very possible that people can um, 
gain a scientific understanding of the interconnectedness of everything and then realize the oneness and then have that awareness shift towards wanting love and compassion. And I think science and technology help people get to that point. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's Flower shirts help as well, man. Yeah, the little, sure. the little floral, for yep. sure, for sure. <laughs> everything to inch it along. Yeah, and it, it helps a lot because, Dan, you know, conversations with people like you, I think, where, where you lay out uh, some really important steps for us, I think get young people realizing that, okay, for the things that Dan said to come to fruition, there need to be young people working on solving those technical and scientific challenges along the way, artistic challenges. And so that's what hopefully people can take away from some of the conversation we had. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Dan, thank you so much for coming on the show for round two. Of course, brother. I love it. Yep. I love it so much. Hopefully, there have been good things taken away for you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this era of programmatically generated everything. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Share it with friends, family, coworkers on social media. Let's get people talking about this and how to actually get there, how to work together in getting there and our ideas in the field. Also, support the artists and entrepreneurs and organizations that you believe in around the world. Support Simulation. Our links are below. Help us doing, do awesome things like continue coming to Cambridge for interviews and achieving all those other goals we listed at the end of the episode. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you soon. Peace. Good job. Got him. Good job. Hey, man.